Welcome to Black Rock Inspired. There once was a young boy who played the cello. He dreamed of becoming a world-renowned cellist, playing in front of sold-out crowds and receiving standing ovations. He had a kind master who spent hours teaching him, but no matter how much they tried, things never seemed to go his way. He played for prestigious music schools and orchestras, but sadly he was rejected time and time again. Every time he played, his kind teacher would encourage him to appreciate his growth and process. The old man taught the boy to be grateful for every opportunity he got to play. On the morning of one big audition, the boy went to see his teacher. The teacher seeing the worry on his face reminded him to enjoy the process and to appreciate the simple opportunity he has to play his cello. The boy thanked him for believing so much in him and went on to play a piece that they had been working on for months. He put all of his heart and soul into it, pouring his emotions into every chord, but when he finished his final note, the judges again shook their heads in disapproval. The young boy left the stage cowed to his toes in disbelief. He felt defeated and lost, and he began to question the point of all his hard work. What was the purpose of striving for excellence if he never seemed to win? What was the point of life if it all just led to disappointment and failure? He decided he wasn't ever going to play again and ran back home to tell his master. Upon arriving, the boy discovered his mentor lying peacefully in eternal slumber. The old man had passed away earlier that day, leaving the boy to face his future alone. Do you ever find yourself lying in bed at night, staring at the ceiling and wondering, what's the point of it all? What's the point of life, the hustle, the money, the rush for fame and for beauty, the drive to fall in love, and the heartbreaks that follow? You're not alone. People have been trying to answer that question for centuries, and there are so many different ideas out there. Many have relied on different forms of religion, on the idea that the point of life is to serve and worship a higher power. Others believe that life is all about finding inner peace and happiness in friendships, family, and art. Today we look at it from a nihilist perspective. Nihilism, from the Latin word nihil meaning nothing, is a philosophy that argues that life has no inherent meaning or value. It challenges traditional notions of morality, religion, and human existence, and raises profound questions about the nature of reality and our place within it. So let's try to understand our young cellist a little more. We could ask, why does he play the cello? Because he wants to be famous or wealthy? Or because he truly loves to play the instrument? And why would he think fame or wealth is important? And if he truly played for the love of it, would he need validation from the judges or the orchestra that kept declining him? If he knew that they would all turn him down, would he still play? And if the response isn't a firm yes, can we still say that he played because he truly loved playing the cello? Clearly, the goal is not to disregard the importance of rewards and global appreciation. In fact, we know that they fuel our desire. We just put a nihilistic lens on the reason behind his frustration and all that we seem to know about him started to taper. In the same way, once we place the big question, why, before every belief or conviction, our vivid mountain peaks soon appear like gray clouds until they eventually fade away. Many philosophers throughout history explored nihilism in depth, each with their own unique perspective and insights. Some have argued that nihilism is a dangerous and destructive philosophy, linking it to a deep-seated pessimism and radical skepticism that outrightly rejects the idea of existence itself. These radicals may find no meaning in anything, have no allegiances, and have no goals other than, perhaps, a burning desire to denounce everything. One of the earliest and most famous nihilistic philosophers was Friedrich Nietzsche, who argued that the rejection of traditional moral and religious beliefs could lead to a more authentic and meaningful life. However, he believed that nihilism's destructive tendencies could eventually erode all moral, religious, and metaphysical convictions, leading to a monumental crisis in human history. In his view, the corrosive impact of nihilism would ultimately push us beyond the boundaries of what we thought possible, forcing us to confront our deepest fears and desires in a way that could either destroy us or set us free. There are several ways the story of the young cellist could end, and if he found common ground with the extremists as we discuss, the story becomes rather tragic. In that scenario, the boy becomes overwhelmed with the belief that life has no meaning. He soon starts to feel bitter and envious of those around him, including his fellow musicians who continue to succeed while he feels stuck in his failures. The bitterness and envy eventually consume him, leading him to become a destructive force in his own life and the lives of those around him. His once promising career as a cellist comes to an abrupt end, and he isolates himself from the world, convinced that there is no point in trying anymore. It's a sad and bleak ending, but unfortunately, 
It's all too common for those who struggle with extreme nihilistic beliefs. Today we have a singular popular word that describes how his story ends, depression or other related mental health disorders. Thankfully, nihilism isn't just a one-way ticket to doomsday town, there's actually a brighter side to it. It's like optimistic nihilism, where you accept that life is inherently meaningless, but instead of crying in a corner, you see it as a blank canvas waiting for your creative strokes. You're the artist of your own life, and you get to decide what colors to use and what shapes to make. Pretty much a Bob Ross meets John Paul Sarge situation. Now we can grab our paintbrushes and get to work on creating the masterpiece that is our life. Nietzsche also recognized the dangers of nihilism, a lack of values and standards, devaluation of human beings, loss of meaning in life, and an attitude of despair and cynicism, and he identified three primary stages necessary to overcome them. Passive nihilism, which involves accepting the meaninglessness of life and learning to live with it. You don't fight it or try to change it, you just accept it. Active nihilism, this would involve taking action, starting a business, writing a book, or volunteering for a cause you're passionate about, and finally, affirmative nihilism, which fully embraces the meaninglessness of life and uses it as a source of strength. Instead of trying to change the fact that life is meaningless, you use it as motivation to live your best life possible. Again, with our story, he would face doubts and uncertainties and wonder if music would ever flow melodiously without the guidance of his teacher. But after a brief period of moping and mourning his losses, he would realize that he didn't require anyone's validation or approval to play the cello. The young cellist would begin playing for the pure bliss of it, bringing joy to anyone who would listen. Whether it was a bustling park, a gloomy hospital ward, or even the vast online world, the satisfaction he derives from creating music would no longer be dependent on winning a competition or impressing a judge, but from the pure delight of it. The smiles of the sick patients, the tapping feet of random strangers, and the peace he found within himself would all fill him with an overwhelming sense of contentment and fulfillment. He would know that his master is proud of him and the joy he brought to people's lives. With every note he played, he honored his teacher's memory and the countless hours spent honing his craft. He would also realize that his teacher had given him a priceless gift, the ability to create beauty in the world through music, something he would now carry with him forever, inspiring others to do the same. Living out the spirit of optimistic nihilism, the young cellist learned that true happiness and peace can be found in doing what matters to oneself and creating joy for others. He understood that although life had no inherent meaning, that he could create his own purpose and meaning by pursuing his passion for music. Thanks to scientific breakthroughs, we now know that the universe is vast and mysterious, and our existence is just a tiny speck in its grand design. It can be easy to feel overwhelmed or insignificant in the face of such enormity, so it has become ever more important to embrace our place in the cosmos and find joy in our unique position as conscious beings. Like with the young cellist, there is power in finding purpose and meaning in our passions, regardless of external validation or recognition. We too can follow his example, using optimistic nihilism as our guide to create our own principles and pursue what brings us true fulfillment. We must try not to be discouraged by the challenges or setbacks we face on our journey. Instead, let us see them as opportunities to learn and grow, to push ourselves further and explore the wonders of the universe. The universe may not have a predetermined purpose for us, but we have the power to define our own. So let us go forth with open hearts and curious minds, eager to discover all that the universe has to offer. Let us embrace our place in the cosmos and find joy in our brief and beautiful existence. For as insignificant as we may seem, we are a vital part of the universe's ongoing story and our experiences and discoveries can shape the future in ways we cannot even imagine. Thank you so much for joining us on this thought-provoking journey through the philosophy of nihilism. We hope it has inspired you to reflect on your own life and the possibilities that lie ahead. If you'd like to delve deeper into this topic, we've provided links to some great books in the description below that can guide you on your journey. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments below. We'd love to hear your insights and experiences on this topic. And of course, if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with our latest videos, exploring the fascinating world of philosophy, self-discovery, and personal growth. Once again, thank you for watching and we look forward to continuing this journey together. Until our next adventure, take care and keep exploring.